Well, good afternoon, everybody. I hope you guys can hear me clearly. My name is Sean Pannenberg. I head up client education at PSG Online. Welcome to our webinar today. And today we're discussing uh, equity derivatives and how to trade them successfully um, and to make money. Okay. Um, like with every webinar, uh, many questions you guys have, please type, type it in the question box. And as we're going along, I'll try and answer it. If not, I'll try and get it answered near the end of the uh, presentation. Or alternatively, I'll answer, the e uh, answer you by email. But uh, again, with every webinar, this uh, web presentation will be sent to everybody, the PowerPoint presentation, as well as the recording. So this presentation is being recorded. So, and uh, the idea with the recording and the presentation is for you to review it and come up with any questions you have. And you can also just answer me or send me emails and questions thereafter. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, we've got a lot of information to cover. Here's the agenda for today. Um, I just want to go quickly over the terminology. A lot of people get stuck with uh, some of the words we use. And then we're going to discuss uh, single stock futures, index futures, and then maybe uh, also uh, contracts for difference. And then just to highlight some examples of long and short trades that we've had handled uh, the last few weeks or so. Okay. So uh, my objective today is just to show you how to make money using equity derivatives. Um, I'm excited about it. Um, it's a great tool to create passive income. Um, and a lot of people were looking at it as, as replacing their full-time income. Okay, so let's get started. Um, let's talk about the terminology. So first of all, we've been talking about equity derivatives. What are equity derivatives? First of all, as the word, as the word uh, implies, it derives its value on the underlying share. So another word for equity is a share. So you're still doing your fundamental homework and still doing your, your technical analysis homework on underlying share, be it Sasol or be it Anglos. Okay. At PSG Online, we only trade the top 100 companies on single stock futures and CFDs. So uh, if you look at it, the top 100 is broken down into the top 40 companies, by what we call large caps, and the next 60 companies, what we call the mid caps. Okay. So the other bit, the advantages of, of, of trading derivatives, first of all, you can trade the, the direction. With equities, you can only make money when the market goes up. You can't take advantage of falling prices. Um, in the States, they call it bear selling, but here in South Africa, it's illegal. You can't go sell shares short, okay? Hence the need for the, for, uh, the uh, derivative products like single stock futures. So first of all, when I say uh, the benefits, you can go long, take advantage of rising prices, but also you can take advantage of falling prices. Now we've seen the last few days that yes, we're making new highs and things like that, and, uh, uh, with the whole thing in the States now with the government uh, uh, suffering um, a bit of a setback regarding finances and the budget, uh, the market has come off a bit, so you can take advantage of that, and that's why we talk about going short. Uh, you'll see that, we'll talk about the list just now, some shares you can only go long, it means you can't go and short those shares, in other words, there's no script available for shorting, but I'll explain that in more detail a bit later. The second big advantage of uh, trading derivatives is that you don't need a lot of capital. Um, you need an initial margin or a deposit, roughly about 15% of the value of, uh, of, of the uh, transaction. So that brings up a very important concept to understand. Derivatives are geared or leveraged products. In other words, you are borrowing the funds. You bring down 15% deposit and you're borrowing the other 85% to have the 100% exposure. Okay. So what does that mean? So when I say leverage, it, for each cent that the share moves in your favor, you multiply that roughly by uh, 10 times. Okay, so one cent movement in your favor will be 10%, 10, 10, 10, 10 cents in your favor. So gearing magnifies your profits or returns. But saying that, you also understand that the market goes against you, okay, gearing also magnifies your losses. Okay, and that's where the most, another very important concept comes in, what we call variation margin. I call it the top up. So compared to normal shares, on a daily basis, you might have a profit, uh, a paper profit. At such time, you've sold the share. Okay, but on a daily basis with, um, with derivatives, we have unrealized profits and losses being processed daily in a natural account. The process is called mark to market. So at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, the JSE, more specifically the South African Futures Exchange, SAFEX, will take uh, the price at 5 o'clock. And depending on your direction, are you long or short, and is the market in your favor, obviously the money you be putting your, the profits for that day will be put in your account, or it will be taken out of your account. Okay. So if the cash account is negative, you need to top up with additional funds. 
That's what we call a margin call. You got until three o'clock the next day to deposit those funds. Okay, to, to bring it bring it up back to that fifteen percent. So in other words, that fifteen percent gets ring fenced. You always have to keep it at fifteen percent. Um, so if you don't deposit the funds, the alternative is for you to close out a certain amount of contracts to cover those losses, or PSU will actually close out the contracts for you. Okay. So just understand that uh, yes, the initial margin is is the initial deposit, but you need additional funds for the variation margin. Okay. So that's just quickly there some of the, the basic terminology. Let's take talk some more. We talk about opening a position and talk about closing a position. What does that mean? Opening position basically you're buying. You are taking advantage of rising prices. If you think the trend will be up, you're going to take advantage of that. If you anticipate the, the market to fall off or the share price to fall, we talk about opening a short position. So uh, that's why we talk about selling. So when you talk about opening a position, okay, uh, I think guys can hear me clearly. Um, so we, we talk about opening position, basically buy something at 5 Rand and sell at 10 Rand, that's your goal. Talking about opening a short position, you sell at 10 Rand to buy, to buy back at 5 Rand. And we talk about uh, 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 opening up a short position. In both situations, you're making 5 Rand. It doesn't matter, matter which way the market's going. We talk about closing a position, this is where you do the opposite. So um, you're, if you're in a long position, you'd sell, and obviously if you're in a short position, you'd be buying back. So a buy at, 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 at 5 Rand to sell at 10 Rand, but also if I'm short, I, I sold at 10 Rand and I buy back at 5 Rand. Okay. When it comes to equity single stock futures, there's this thing called rolling a position. Okay. This is an automatic closing and reopening of the next contract. Okay. So we talk about the next dated or next party contract, we talk about it in the next, in the next session. Okay. But so it's moving over to the next contract. We at the moment trading December contract automatically roll over to the March quarter contract. But if you're trading single stock futures on, on SASL, it's roll over to the same underlying instrument. So this is understand of single stock futures, we talk about rolling a position. That's a that's a default uh, situation with equity single stock futures. Okay. So that's just some of the background. Let's go into more detail regarding um, each of the uh, the products as such. So let's talk about single stock futures first of all. So, what's the big difference? The main thing about single stock futures is that they are regulated. They're regulated by the JSC uh, in the sense that it gives you the peace of mind that there is some recourse, something goes wrong, either the stockbroker, uh, you can go back to the JSC and say, okay, well, what's happening here? So, you've got some protection there. So, that's the whole idea about being, being regulated. It's PSG Online, for example, we're regulated by the Financial Services Board, but also regulated by the JSC. So the big thing now about single stock futures, they are standardized contracts. Everything's the same. You can go buy minimum of one contract. And one contract equal to 100 shares. You can't buy less than, 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 than one contract. So remember I spoke to you just now, it's a derivative, the rise is value on the underlying share. We only take the top 100 companies. But when it comes to single stock futures, they do have a life. In other words, they have traded roughly about 90 days or a quarter. So we have the, the third Thursday of every quarter we roll over the next contract. We just had now a, a week or so ago, uh, we had the, the, the September futures closeout, and we've rolled over into the December contract. So I think the, the third Thursday in September, in December, I think it's about the 19th, uh, that's when we have the, the December closeout. But anyway, we have the in March, June, September, and December, four times a year, we have an expiry. Okay. I mentioned just now that uh, you need to put down an initial margin where a deposit is roughly about 15% uh, of the value of the transaction. So in other words, a single stock future, by putting down 15, roughly about 15%, you're geared up to six times. Okay. So remember also very important, people forget that the variation margin is very, very important. You need additional funds for that. So that's for the adverse price movement, the market goes against you, you need to be able to top up. Okay. So this is a word of uh, advice. Uh, single stock futures and, and, and contracts for difference or CFDs, uh, they do come with a bit of a wealth warning. Um, you know, if you're not controlling your losses, you can lose more than your margin. Okay, your margin is only 15%. If you lose that, you've lost 100%. You need to top up again. So you can lose more than that. So that's unlimited. So it's very, very important when we talk about single stock futures and CFDs and that, that you manage your risk. And I'm going to be harping on it a bit later. Okay. So that is a, it's just a, a quick introduction to single stock futures. Let's talk about comparing it to an equity situation. 
on the left hand side here, we've got a, a investor that wants to buy the buys into Sassel shares. So got 48,000 rand she wants to invest, and just happens that Sassel share price is trading at 480 rand. So she goes and buys 100 rand. I was going to keep it simple. There's no brokerage and things not getting involved. Anyway, she goes buys 100 shares, 48,000 rand. Three months later, the share price has increased by 10%. So she made 10% on her, on, on, on her money, 4,800 rand. That's not, that, not too bad if you look at over a three month period. But the return on investment is 10%. Now, exactly the same scenario now, if you look on the right hand side, we have an investor or trader, a single stock futures trader, that also is confident that Sassel share price will go up from the oil price and the exchange rate. And, and it goes and buys the underlying share at 480 rand. Now, instead of buying 100 shares, it goes, buys 100, uh, sorry, it goes and buys one contract. Remember, it's the same. The big difference comes in now where the initial margin required in this situation is only 5,478 rand. Instead of putting on 48,000 rand, only 5,478 rand. So if you look at that, what, you, what you're putting down to the exposure, you'll get 8.76 times. That's not too shabby. It means that every one rand movement, you're getting 8 rand 76 in your favor, if the market's moving in your favor. So in our situation here, let's say for example, after three months, uh, the market moves in your favor, you make 10% on that, and your profit, as I say, is 4,800. But as a percentage of your deposit of, uh, of 5,478 rand, your return is 87%. Yeah, that's not very, not, not, not too shabby, huh? do you agree? So that's some of the advantages. Obviously, it's very capital efficient, and um, obviously, you'll see now with costs, it's very, very cheap. So let's talk about costs. Compared to normal equities, uh, the brokerage on single stock futures is 0.4% excluding that of the value of the transaction, the value or the exposure. So number one, 0.4%. There's also 0.1% what they call market makers, uh, market makers uh, fee. So the total brokerage on the opening leg is in 0.57%. Uh, okay, that's including VAT. With single stock futures, there's also what they call a booking fee. It's, a, it's equivalent of 60 rand, which is charged per contract on a new position is opened. So it's only on the opening leg of all transactions. You only pay it once per day. So for example, I buy a Sassel contract now, and 10 minutes later I buy another, thing, another uh, uh, Sassel contract. As long as it's in the same day, you only pay that booking fee once. So be careful of buying today and buying another contract tomorrow. Okay, because obviously your costs will be much higher. So that's the brokerage and, and booking fee and things like that. Remember, you bring down 15% and you're basically borrowing the other 85%. So there's interest payable on the cost value and that's determined on a daily basis and that's priced into the share price, into the price already when you buy the, the contract. The, your deposit you're putting down Okay, your initial margin, you receive interest on that, as well as also all the other cash balances in your account. So these are just some of the, the, the costs involved and, and the fees that's, uh, that's involved in trading single stock futures. Okay, at PSG Online we trade what they call dividend neutral contracts. What it basically means that the dividend is, is priced into the single stock futures price already. So you anticipate, or the, the, the JSC anticipates um, uh, any dividend payment over the next 90 days, the next quarter, it's automatically priced into the uh, single stock futures price. But you'll see on the next slide, uh, and I'll show you a, a, a screenshot of our holdings where they split it. We talk about an a, a, a N contract and an F contract. Okay, so on long trades, okay, the N contract combined with the single stock, with the uh, dividend, uh, will be 100 Rand. Just the, the, the price itself will be 95. And if you're long, receive a five rand dividend. That's how we, uh, uh, the price will be uh, calculated. If you're, if you're short uh, on single stock futures, you pay out the dividend. Remember with long, tra with long trades, you, you, um, uh, you pay interest, and with short, uh, short trades, you receive interest, but you pay out the dividend. So just understand that you do not actually get the dividend. That's a big difference between single stock futures and CFDs. With CFDs you actually get like a, a manufactured or a, a synthetic dividend. With single stock futures you do not actually receive the dividend. Okay, so here's a screenshot. I hope you guys can see it. Uh, let me just get my little cursor here quickly. Uh, spotlight. Here's a, a December contract on Mediclinic. Okay, there's five contracts. Uh, that's the share price. Okay, uh, and there's, that's the share price uh, current. And that's the, the dividend, the expected dividend, 28 cents per share. Five contracts equal to uh, uh, 500 shares, so 500 shares times 28 cents, 
share at one hundred and forty. So that's negative. It means that you, as soon as you've opened a short contract, you would have paid out the dividend. Obviously, until such time that the actual dividend gets paid out, uh, you're still eligible for that. However, if you close out beforehand, you actually receive it back. So you actually don't get, you don't lose anything. So that's why I say it's, it's a neutral contract. So that's how it gets reflected. Okay. Let me just get rid of my cursor again. Let's go back to normal. Let me just quickly see if there's any questions coming through. No questions yet. Uh, as I say, any questions yet, guys, just type it in the box. I can pick it up. So I hope you guys can hear me loud and clear. Okay. Um, let's move forward. Uh, one of the advantages, oops, sorry, let me go back. One of the advantages of single stock futures is being in a position where you can hedge. This is especially uh, good for a long-term investor. You've got a big portfolio. You don't want to actually be selling your shares because uh, obviously it might trigger capital gains or you know, your strategy might be a buy, buy and hold strategy. Um, so single stock futures are a nice tool to help yourself to hedge against any potential loss. Let's have an example. You have some NASPA shares in your portfolio. Very recently they hit 950 rand a share. Let's have an example. You anticipate that there has to be some profit taking and the market is overbought. And let's say, for example, you're anticipating that the market will pull back at least to a, a 50%. This is what they call oops, sorry, what they call on Fibonacci. So on Fibonacci pulls back 50% through tracement back to the 750 rand level. That's a 200 rand loss per share. Now let's say, for example, you have 500 shares of NASPAS in your portfolio. Okay? And you anticipate the share price to drop by 200 rand a share. So in this situation, okay, 200 rand loss per share is equivalent of a potential 100% uh, 100,000 rand loss. You know, on your portfolio of roughly about 475,000, that's like a 20% drop. And usually when we talk about 20% drop in the, on the stock market, we talk about a crash. So what do you do now to compensate for that potential loss? You take out five contracts. Remember, five contracts equal to 500 shares. So if the, if the share price drops by 200 rand, what you lose on your equity side, you make up on the, on the, on the single stock futures side. And that's what we talk about by being in a situation where you're hedging your losses. So the ideal loss would be, uh, ideal hedge would be in a situation where you're not actually losing any money. You might be paying, paying some, uh, some brokerage, etc. Okay. I'm sorry about the jumping backwards and forwards here. Um, so that is just uh, some of the advantages of, uh, of single stock futures. I personally like to use single stock futures more for the, um, um, the, uh, the, the shorts. Because um, you'll see just now, we talk about um, the costs involved. Um, one of the big advantages, here, as, as I mentioned, is that you can hedge yourself. Ah, oh, sorry, this thing is so sensitive. Uh, they're capital efficient. So you don't need a lot of uh, uh, funds. They're very, very cheap. As I say, you can hedge your portfolio. Secondly, obviously, the trading platform is also a big advantage. You have what they call direct, direct market access. There's no supervisor looking at your transaction. You, you're trading directly through the JSC. Obviously, this is doing normal, off, uh, normal trading hours. However, you can place trades after hours. You're not going to watch the market in the morning. You can still play it. If the price gets to this level, trigger it and go to the market. You can also set up what they call stops, price alerts and stops. We'll show you the platform just now. On the disadvantage side, is to say, yes, you're borrowing money, so yes, there's interest payable. But I always believe that you know, you're using other people's money and it's still worthwhile. Just understand that there is a quarterly uh, uh, rolling fee, 0.25% of the exposure. So remember, if uh, you, you pay that every quarter, so that's one percent additional cost every 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 year. Remember, you're trading the neutral contracts, not actually getting the dividend. And secondly, obviously, uh, or fourthly, is that you can have a million Cecil contracts. You are not a shareholder. You do not have voting rights. You can't go to the AGM. And it can be a disadvantage, uh, uh, gearing if you don't know how to manage it. And obviously the risk factors. So it's very important that you teach yourself about single stock futures, hence this webinar. So you can teach yourself more about the actual financial product. So that can be a disadvantage. But I still believe that the uh, advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Okay. So let's talk about uh, the contracts available and things like that. As I say, we're talking about the top 100 companies, the top 40, and then the next 60 companies by, by market cap. So. Once you've registered on the website, you need to register for a single stock futures account. Even though you might have an equity account, you still have to open up a separate single stock futures account because the risks are separate. 
there's a separate mandate you have to uh, uh, sign and things like that. However, if we've got your FICA, we don't have to do your FICA again. Anyway, you log into, your, into, the, into, the, into the platform with your username and password, and on the website you'll find there's a button here called Indices. On the Indices, you, then you click on a little button here called Futures. And this is what you're looking for. It's this little tab called Single Stock Futures Available. So this list to give you the list of all the shares, all the, 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 the contracts available you can trade, but also more importantly, okay, you get another shared codes, to be exactly like those that you'll be trading with, with, with equities, gives you the long name, there's the December, so we're only trading the December contract at the moment, but there's each one will have an initial margin, so, so the JC decides that, uh, 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 roughly about 15% uh, of the value, for example, you want to go trade um, Avenge now, you only need 343 rand per contract. And as I say, the future, this, this future is expiring the 19th of December. There's the list. You can see that B stands for both. You can go long and short. Uh, you have, for example, on Amplex, you can only go long. You can't go short with, uh, with Amplex. And same with uh, uh, Coronation Fund. There's not enough script available for, you, for us to go into the market and borrow the script because we don't, we, we don't trade naked. That's a special we use. So we always have a script available, you, we use that as, as, as collateral. So unfortunately these two stocks, uh, there's not enough available in the market to, to go and borrow the script. Anyway, that's where you find the list and obviously uh, what I suggest is always print this list out, you can see what's available. Okay, uh, let's move forward, let's talk about the platform. You saw just now what, uh, what a portfolio looks like, or, or, uh, the holding situation. So he has a single stock futures account, in this situation this client is short of everything, so he's short of Anglo, he's short of Mediclinic, and we spoke about it already, the, the, the uh, F contract uh, is uh, MMI, uh, redefine also, you can see the two contracts there with, uh, regarding the dividends. Okay, what I find fascinating is I say you don't need a lot of money, roughly about 30,000 Rand, gives you about 300,000 Rand exposure, in this situation just over 2,000 Rand is made profit. But let's say for example, you made 3,000 Rand profit. That's 2,000 Rand on 30,000, which is 10%, and that can be in a, in a few days. Okay, and that's where it gets so exciting about single stock futures. You don't need a lot of capital. 30,000 would be 300,000 Rand exposure. Okay. Let's have an example. You want to go trade single, uh, 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 put a trade on, on Old Mutual. Sorry, I've got the wrong code here. It should be OML. You get a, a breakout of a, a triangle. So you decide, okay, my stop will just be above uh, the, the previous high, the entry level will be a 35, and your stop will be, the, your target price will be the 200 day moving average. So as you can see from this graph, it's very important when you're looking at single stock futures and trading single stock futures that you use technical analysis. Technical analysis is a very, very important tool in making a, a more informed decision. Anyway, those are the numbers that you need. You go to the platform. Okay, once you've registered for a single stock futures account, uh, you click on, uh, you select your single stock futures uh, uh, account, then you click on a little button called new order. Now new order, uh, it will open up a screen like this, and I think by default it will be PSG. So what you need to do, in this little bo bo box here, you need to type the, the share code of the share that you want to trade. So hopefully by the time you get to this stage, you've done your homework, fundamental analysis and technical analysis. So in this situation, I type in OML, I click on the go button, it opens up a screenshot, obviously this is live, what's happening right now, this is a, a screenshot, uh, this is until yesterday, uh, and let's have an example, we're going to go trade some um, um, old mutual, there you can see a margin requirement per, per contract, 390 Rand, I want to go buy two contracts, so two contracts times uh, 100 shares, times my, my price, 335, okay, my, my exposure is such, 6,070 Rand, I need to put down 780 Rand margin, so divide that 670 by that 780, in this situation I've got 7.78 uh, gearing, I'm, I'm willing to risk 1 Rand to make 7 Rand 78, that's what's in essentially what it means. Okay, so that gives you an idea what the margin looks like, what you do then is you select on the next button, you, you select uh, a, long, a long open or short open, remember we spoke about opening a, 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 a long position or opening up a short position, in this situation, we want to go short, okay, I want to go short, I anticipate falling prices, there I select open, a short open, I put in my contracts, remember contracts, not the number of shares, I put in two contracts, which is the equivalent of 200 shares, I put in my price, 
Again, I click on the submit button. Okay. What I suggest you do is, as soon as, uh, uh, as soon as you've got the contract, then you come back again and you set in what I call a price watch and stop order. As I mentioned just now, very important that you manage your losses. So select step one, again select a new order, and then select a, a price watch and stop order. They have to work together. So in this situation, remember I'm short. If the price goes up, it goes against me. So I want to be in a situation where I want to be triggered. If the market goes against me, I want to, I want to get out the market. My stop loss must be triggered. In this situation, remember I bought a 3035. I want to set my stop at 31 Rand or 3100. Uh, okay. And then I want to close out my position. If I don't select my stop order, by the way, I only can send me an SMS. The order's been triggered. You need to use them together. So remember, I'm in this situation, I've got two contracts, and I'm just sitting at slightly bit higher. That's my price. Where will the market be trading at? If it gets triggered, and remember, it gets triggered at 31 rand. Okay. If the market runs above, above that, the worst case scenario, 31 rand 50. But at least I'm minimizing my losses to a certain percentage. Roughly, I always limit my losses to roughly between 2.5 and 3%. So as soon as I've got the contract, then you come back. Don't try and do all three contracts together, all three steps together. I click on submit, you go into my order book, and be waiting there for me. Okay. It's very important that you make sure that your profile set up regarding your, your, your SMS, uh, your cell number, and your email address. Okay. So this is very important to talk about risk management. So I just want to make a, a big note again. The price wash and the stock order have to be used together to execute a trade. Otherwise, the price alert just sends you SMS or email. Okay, the order book will only the order only reflect the order book when it gets triggered. So that's very, very important to understand that. Okay, to be lying there the whole time under your price watch, you know, you'll be able to see it there. Uh, make sure it's there. Also, very important if it does get triggered, always go back to and cancel uh, wherever the, uh, is on the market there. Okay, I like to have price orders. I take, I take profits, but also I'd like to have my, my stop orders together. Okay, so I always have the upside and the downside targets in place. Okay, so let's talk about trading all the futures uh, and all futures or index futures before moving on to contracts for difference. Okay, so all the futures are futures contracts based on the top 40 index. Instead of just buying individual stocks in the top 40 index, now you're buying the index. So obviously this is obviously uh, for the bigger uh, uh, trader. Uh, you can still take advantage of the direction, you can go long, buy the index now and sell it later, obviously when the price has arisen, or you go short, sell the index now and buy it back later when, when the price has fallen. So this is very popular, especially with institutions, because it's highly, highly liquid, it's highly tradable. Secondly, they're very, very cheap, and they only cost you 25 Rand, and that's including that, per Aussie contract. And there's also no booking fee, there's no 60 Rand booking fee with this. They are very, very tight spread between the bids and the office. Okay, the very, very narrow, you'll see example just now. And obviously that ch changes all the time, but it's a screenshot, I think it's about nine points difference. So each point is equal to 10 Rand. So on a point move, it's equivalent to a profit of a thousand Rand or a thousand Rand loss. Okay. And a big thing about this, obviously it's not for everybody. You need a lot of, uh, when I say a lot of margin, uh, you need at least 30,000 Rand to take out one contract. Then we still need variation margin. So again, on a daily basis, mark to market, profits and losses will get put into your account. If the market moves in your favor, the profits in your account today, it moves against you, you need to top up. Another thing about, the, about all the futures or index futures, they do not roll over. They actually auto close, close on, on futures. You have to open up the next contract yourself. Okay. So um, that's all the, uh, the The smaller version, I, like, I call this a stepping stone. Uh, is what they call the OB, the mini version of the Aussie Futures, where the, the Aussie Futures gives you 100% exposure of the, of the uh, index. If the market's trading at 40,000 points, you have a, a, a 400,000 rand exposure. With the mini OB, uh, uh, it's 10% of the OZ. Okay, so it's only 40,000 rand exposure. So obviously the margin is slightly different and things like that. Liquidity is improving as more and more people get involved in the markets as, uh, uh, with all me, as same as the spreads. They used to be a bit wider, they are starting to narrow. Okay. There is a market maker in place, one of the, uh, the, the, the banks as such, uh, big Macquarie or R&D, they are making the market to try and uh, uh, make those, uh, those spreads a bit smaller, okay, narrower. With uh, the all me, each index point is worth one rand. So the market goes in your favor, you get one rand 
for each point. So it goes down a point, you go down your rate in your account. As I say, the margin, you only need 10% of that, 3,307 Rand to open up a Aussie, uh, Aussie contract. By the way, if you open up a, a single stock futures contract uh, account, you automatically have exposure to the, the index futures. So it costs you 5 Rand, that is per contract. There's no booking fee, and remember, that they, they do not roll over, it's auto close. So here's the idea that uh, um, yeah, I'm looking at the, uh, the Aussie. Uh, I've been trading in a, in a bit of an up channel. I, I, I see it forming a bit of a rising wedge. Um, it is overbought, so I'm, I'm anticipating the market to pull back. So I'll be looking at more of the, the short side. However, it is trading far above its 200 day moving average. So this will be more for the aggressive traders. So yeah, that would, would be for what they call a swing trader or a position trader. Alternatively, uh, you can also look at intraday. Um, this is where the day traders would take advantage of, of the market. This is only a three hours graph um, from 9 o'clock to 12 o'clock. In, in this situation, the market dropped 200 points. Now, 200 points times uh, 10 rand a point, that's 2,000 rand. Now, you might only have one contract, so that's 2,000 rand. But what happens if you have 10 contracts? Okay? Or, or five contracts? So this is a, a, a general favor. Okay. This is what the platform looks like. Going back to what we spoke just now, you click on New Order, and you go click on uh, uh, the automatically go open up by default onto PSG. There's a little button here called Central Order Book. This is where you find the order trades. You click on the Central Order Book, it takes you through to a page like this. You select the drop-down list, and there's the All Me and the, and, and the All Z. Obviously, there's a lot of other commodity futures, which we're not going to talk about today. We're concentrating them on the index futures. So let's say, for example, I want to go trade the all Z, but you can only go trade the December contract. This, is, this was yesterday. There's a margin requirement again. Uh, remember, it's in points. There's a business office I was talking about. Very narrow. This is uh, uh, roughly about nine points different. That's volume. That's three, that's three contracts or 300 shares, and that's two contracts that side. The same market makers are making the, the market in the situation. If I want to go short, I'll be selling the, the market. Remember the contract. And it's very important that you put the price here in cents. Remember, it's the index, but you're putting, sorry, in, in rands rather. So that's 39.725 would be the points. Um, and I'm anticipating the market to fall back. So I click on submit, it goes in the market, there's a willing, a, a willing buyer in this situation, you've got the contract. So that's what the, what the Aussie looks like. Omi looks very similar. Obviously, it's just that the margin requirements is slightly different. Again, one contract, same thing. Same price, everything, it's just that the margin requirement is different. Remember, each point is equal to one rand. So here's what, the, what a, a, a holdings will look like. Here's, a, here's an example of a client. He's short of the market, December. One contract, that's a margin. That's a future cost. Okay? That's where he traded at. That's where it is now. So the market has fallen. It's fallen 14 points. So each point is 14 rand. There we go. That's what you're seeing now. So this has a nice little stepping stone. Um, to move from, from equities into, into Aussie trading, tra trade with the OMI first of all. Okay, so quick summary. Uh, single stock futures offers you a new dimension. Remember, especially on the short side, you can take advantage of rising markets plus a, 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 a falling prices. So there's always opportunities to make money. Remember, as an investor, you can also hedge yourself using single stock futures. But as a normal trader, you have the opportunity for you to speculate in the market. Remember, the capital efficient. So here's that gearing, it's, a, it's attractive to the small investor, but just understand that there's risks involved. Manage your risk. So equity single stock futures are great for the swing trader. Swing trader is someone who holds a position from two days to 30 days. Okay. So you don't need a lot of outlay, uh, roughly about 15%. Obviously they're very cheap. 0.5% uh, per leg, um, so they're very cheap. Aussie is more for the serious day trader, if I report it that. And all is great for this as a stepping stone towards trading uh, the all Z. Just remember, just a, 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 call it peace of mind, single stock futures, remember, are regulated. There's a counterparty risk in, play, in place. Okay. So I hope that uh, gave you a quick overview of what a single stock futures. I personally like to use them for, for shorting the market uh, more than, 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 uh, than going long. I prefer the CFDs for that. Okay. So talking about CFDs, let's talk about uh, what, what are CFDs and the trading costs and things like that and pros and cons. Very similar to, uh, uh, to um, single stock futures, it's still a derivative, you can go long and short. The big difference is now, as the word implies, 
contracts for difference. It's a contract between two parties, you as a client and PSG online. All it is is a, a contract is settled at the close of the contract. There's no time. Uh, you can hold this contract as long as you want to. But as long as uh, the, the difference between opening and closing price is in your favor, there's profits. If it goes against you, obviously there's losses in, involved. So remember, being a derivative, it's mark to market on a daily basis. Those profits and losses come in your account uh, or go out of your account. Okay. So whereas with single stock futures, each one will have a different RAND value. Uh, with CFDs, we, PSG Online stipulates the margin requirement. So at this point in time, PSG Online stipulates at least 15% margin required for the top 40 stock and 17.5% required on the next 60 companies on the mid caps. Okay. So whatever, whatever shares you're trading, obviously that, that initial margin gets ring fenced. It has to be kept at 15% or 17.5%. It's important to understand that you need additional funds for that variation margin, what I call the top up. Okay. So slight differences. The big differences, I believe, comes in where they are a minimum cost value. Each transaction has must have a minimum value of twenty-five thousand. So again, it's not for everyone. Single stock futures are great for a, a small investor just starting out, a small trader getting out involved. CFDs, on the other hand, you need, need you do need additional funds. So if you're trading a top forty stock, minimum uh, funds needed will be uh, three thousand seven hundred fifty rand. If it's a top 40 stock, if it's a mid-cap stock, at least 4,375 rand. So I would say minimum to get started on CFDs uh, is about 10,000 rand. But the more funds, the better. I always suggest 50,000 plus. I like to use 100,000 plus. This gives you more flexibility. You know, you, only, you don't only want to be trading one, tra one position. You want to have quite a few different positions open. Um, and that's where the advantage comes in. Um, I just also feel personally that uh, CFDs are a bit uh, simpler. Uh, they're not so complex, uh, but also they are cheap. Brokerage zero point four percent. There's no uh, uh, market makers commission and there's no booking fee. So I personally think that CFDs are much cheaper, um, but also you're, you're open to negotiate those those rates with um, with PEG, provided you're an active trader. Obviously, your, your trades are, are quite big. Okay, so we are open for that. The difference is now when it comes to CFDs that there's obviously interest being charged on a daily basis. We talk about uh, uh, SAFX plus 2. It's around about uh, prime interest rates less 2%. Prime's about, uh, about 9.5 now or 8.5 less 2. So you tr you, you, it's, charge, it's, it's costing you 6.5% per annum to borrow the funds. The big disadvantage of CFDs is when you look at, if you look at shorting the market. There's a script for, uh, lending fee involved. It's a, uh, it works out to 1.5% per annum or a minimum of 250 rand per position. So as I said, I like to use single stock futures more for, for, uh, for shorting because of those costs. So if you do want to trade single stock futures, CFDs on the short side, just be aware that there's additional cost involved there. Okay. Here's an example. If you want to go buy a thousand old mutual shares, okay, at, uh, at 30 rand 42, this was yesterday, your exposure would have been roughly about 30,000 rand if you had bought equities. In this situation, being a top 40 stock, and you need to put down 50% of that 30,420 Rand. So you need to put down 4,563 Rand. So you're getting this 6.67 times. So that's where it gets exciting. Your brokerage, 0.4% of that, which is 121 Rand. If it was a normal equity trade, it would have been equivalent okay, of 225 Rand. Plus your, plus your, sorry, that was just for the first 25,000, remember the sliding scale, 0.9% for the first 25,000, and then 0.85% for the next 5,420 rand. So your cost would have been 270 rand. Remember the minimum brokerage, 98 rand per trade. Plus you still have to add a, a, a VAT onto that. But compare it, you know, yeah, we're talking about with VAT, 148 uh, rand. So, so they're capital efficient and they're very, very cheap. So in this situation, remember I said your interest on cost, it's uh, roughly about 4.73%, and this is on a daily basis. This, is, it does change, but it gives you an idea. That's my uh, 2%, uh, I guess it's 6.73%. That's my exposure for 30,420 Rand. Times that interest rate, that's 2,047 Rand, if I had a hold for the whole year. Okay, so that's down 365, there we work out 561 per day. So on a daily basis, that's what I've been charging, what I've been charged. 
And I'm also receiving interest on deposit plus any cash available, so I'm receiving 34 cents. Let's just give you a very quick idea of what the costs are involved. Okay. Um, I'm just running out of time, I'm going to go through this quickly, but just understand that CFD trading compared to equity trading is much, much cheaper. 0.46% compared to 1.3% on the equity side. So there's pros and cons, if you're going to compare single stock futures to CFDs, the main thing is that uh, CFDs, there's no expiry date, uh, and obviously you do actually receive a manufactured dividend. Okay, so there's some of the big differences. Obviously the other thing is that single stock futures are regulated. So when you get this presentation, just go through this again, it will reinforce some of the, the points I'm trying to highlight for you guys. Again, click on indices, click on uh, CFD, sorry, futures, and there's a C CFD tab. That gives you the breakdown of which stocks are 17.5% and which ones are 15%. Again, I suggest to split that list out. Okay, I like actually put the Excel spreadsheet and I, spread, uh, and then I rank it 15%, 17.5%. So I can see the top 40 stocks and the caps. There we go, that's what the, what the platform looks like. Very similar, like your equities, very similar to what you look at with. Um, uh, with uh, single stock futures, um, your profits and losses and things like that. So again, the same example, you want to go short on, on, on old mutual, exactly the same process, there's your margin, tells you 50% required, you want to go buy 1,000 shares at 30,000 rand, uh, 30, uh, 30 rand at 42 cents, etc. Exactly the same process we saw just now with the um, uh, old mutual on single stock futures. Again, as soon as you bought the contract, come back, Click on new order and get set up a price watch and a, price and a stop order. Okay. Very important that you manage your losses very, very tightly. Okay. Remember that they have to work together. You only have a price alert, you'll get an SMS. They have to work together. Okay. So just quickly to go through the pros and cons before tackling any questions. Um, as I said, they are capital efficient. There's no fixed quantities. Uh, well, there are fixed quantities as long as the uh, the, the transaction value is 25,000. I can go buy 100 shares. I can go buy 80 shares as long as the exposure is more than 25,000. If it's less than that, the system will say, eh, you can't do the trade. Okay, remember, very, very low trading costs. And secondly, with CFDs, there's no expiry date, so there's no rollover costs. So essentially, you're saving yourself 1% per annum, 0.25% uh, every quarter. So this is ideal for the position trader. Position trader is someone who's holding from a few weeks to a few months to a few years. Okay, as long as the, the, the trader is moving in your favor and you can handle the variation margin and you can handle the, uh, the interest, no problem. I have a question here regarding uh, hedging. I prefer single stock futures, but you still have all the other benefits uh, of capital growth as well as dividend income with trading CFDs. I like CFDs. I just find that they're much simpler to understand. Trading platform is very similar to your, to your single stock futures. You still have DMA, you still have off the hours, tra uh, uh, be, be able to place your orders off the hours, things like that. Um, as I say, the disadvantage is the strip lending fees. And again, if you un don't understand gearing and risk, it can be a disadvantage. But uh, again, I still believe that there's still more advantages than disadvantages. Okay. So here's some examples of long and short trades quickly. This is a trade we put on the 28th of, of uh, or, or 20, 26th of August. AccuCap, which is a property company. This is what we this is what we put out, what we call the stock broker. So those of you that do have active single stock futures account and, C, and CFD accounts, with PHT online, this is a nice tool you can use, uh, maybe to compensate for your own analysis or to confirm your own analysis. Um, so here's a trade I put out uh, on the 28th of August on AccuCap. I was anticipating a breakout. Uh, yes, it was trading below its moving averages. It was a bit of an aggressive trade. So you can see my, my, uh, my trade was on the long side. I say buy. That was my entry level, 41.60. My take profit was, was the, move, the moving averages, was the uh, 46.24. And that's all in, in this little texture. What's important always is to calculate the stop loss. My stop loss, is, uh, if the market moves against me below that low, that was a 40 rand, I would get out. So very, very important always, before putting on the trade, calculate your risk reward ratio. In this situation, I'm calculating that my risk reward ratio is 1.2.34. In other words, I'm willing to risk 1 rand to make at least 2 rand 34. How did I calculate that? I calculate the difference between my entry level and my profit. This is my entry level relative to my stock. 
So in this situation, a potential of 4 and 64 uh, 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 profit per share, and at a potential of, of a, a loss of Oh, I don't think this is right. That's definitely not right. Um, sorry, okay, that do, this is not right here. This is 9 and 20 is not right. But you can see here, uh, my 41 rand 60 to do my 40 rand, it, it should be 1 rand, 1 rand, uh, 1 rand 60. So I'm dividing 1 rand 60 into my 2000 rand. That gives me what they call position sizing. Sorry guys, before I send this presentation out to you guys tonight, I will update uh, this PowerPoint presentation. So. What's important on the one side of the, of the equation is to calculate your stop loss, the other side of the equation is to calculate your, your money management. Hence this little example we've got here. Okay. What happened with this trade? We closed out this trade last week on the 25th of September. I revised the profit down. Remember our initial profit was at 46 24 I revised the take profit or my target price down to 44 I still made 7% on that trade. Remember, I'm only putting roughly about 15% down, okay, uh, so we still made a nice return, okay, your 7.45% as a percentage of your 15%, of very, very close to your 50%, and that's in a very short period of time, that was our breakout here, that was the trade we were taking out there. So you can do this once or twice or three times a month, that's the kind of things you're looking for. This is the trade we put on on the, on the, on the 11th of September on MTN. Again, the same scenario, okay, I was calculating um, uh, potential, potential profits and losses. Uh, I was anticipating a breakout out of, the, out of this uh, down channel, that upward movement. This is what happened, it broke out nicely and it ran up. In this situation, we actually revised our profit slightly down. Uh, when it started hitting my, 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 uh, my trend line here, um, I did get a bit nervous, yes, that was a bit of fear, um, I just thought, okay, we rather lock in some profits, we were overbought, uh, the next day it bounced back again, so I could have taken a slightly higher profit, could have made my 5 or 5.5%, five but I was pretty happy with my 4% my in a very short period of time. So those are some examples of long trades, here's examples of short trades we've got on at the moment, MMI, this is the old metropolitan uh, momentum deal, I was anticipating a breakout of this, we put this trade on, um, last week, um, and obviously it was a breakout, um, this was where we put out the trade on Friday, and on low involved on Monday, was uh, the share went ex-dividend, the share price dropped. Okay, um, this is a redefine, another short trade we just put on recently, we still have this, oh, we've got still open position here, um, again, we're we anticipating a breakout or out of this, call it rising wedge formation, uh, it was a, nine, a 981 was our entry level, our take profit was the previous low, 867, eight, eight, our stop is just slightly above that, 1025. So I've got a potential of, uh, of a 44 Rand risk, I'm willing to risk 44 cents to make a 1 Rand 14. That's how I got this risk reward ratio of 2.59. So I've got a potential of making 11% on, on, on my 15%, which is roughly about 66%, which is not too shabby. Okay. Uh, if I've got 100,000 rand starting capital, I'm only willing to risk 2% per trade, okay, so that's roughly about 2% 2 per, 2 per, per transaction. I take my stop loss, which we calculate, calculated here as 44 cents, divide that into my 2,000. That gives me in this situation, if I was trading C, uh, CFDs, I can go buy 4,445 uh, shares. If I'm looking at buying single stock futures, uh, it will be 45 contracts. Now in this situation, redefined contracts are only 85 rand per contract. So a lot of people can afford 85 rand to have exposure of uh, 9 rand 81. Okay, so it's going to cost you uh, uh, 981 rand to, <laughs> as a transaction. Okay, so remember this is a 17.5 percent margin requirement on CFDs. Um, so you obviously need to have those funds available. So this is some examples that that I've been trading recently. Um, and I hope this presentation has helped you guys. Let me just see if there's any questions coming through quickly. Um, ah, there's some questions coming through. Uh, let's take the first one here. Uh, there's a question from Stephen. Please advise the interest rate payable on single stock futures. Uh, okay, remember that's on a daily basis. It's roughly about 4.4.5% per annum. 
So uh, it varies on a daily day to day basis, but it's priced into the single stock futures price already, Stephen. So uh, it's, as I say, roughly about 4.5% uh, on a daily basis. Uh, yeah, the question from Neil Volata. Uh, Neil, do you need a special account to trade the uh, uh, OMI? No, you just need to open up a single stock futures account. For those of you that don't have a single stock futures account, if I can give you a word of advice, there's two options. Uh, a single stock futures account with commodities and there's a single stock futures account with all the, the, the all index futures plus commodities plus currency futures. I suggest uh, you might not be uh, in the market right now to open up a currency account, but I'd rather go for that account. It doesn't cost you anything additional, uh, but rather have that flexibility that down the line you might want to learn about currency futures and you can always uh, uh, accounts open already. So I hope that answers your question, Neil. Um, he has another question here from Albi, uh, sorry, Al uh, Andre, let's see, just move up here, Andre de Yaga, thanks for your question, um, is there a minimum brokerage on CFDs? Yes, uh, there's a minimum, 0.4%, that's, that's a flat rate, uh, but there's no, there's no uh, additional market makers fee and there's no booking fee, so 0.4% flat plus, plus VAT. Per, per leg, opening and closing. Okay, so 0.57% with that and uh, 0.5%. So it's in and out the market roughly about 0.94%. The share must move for you to break even. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question on, on, um, on costs. Uh, here's a question here from Alistair. Can we trade, can we trade using when or must we do it through PHR online? Okay. Uh, I'm not 100% sure of the question here. Okay, remember any technical analysis package, be it Metastock or be it uh, Web Professional, remember it's just a charting package, it's not a trading platform. So to, you do your analysis on a charting regarding your entry levels and support and resistance and when you put your stops, but you place the order, place the trade on the, the, the PHR Online uh, platform. So yes, you need to open up a trading account, you need to open up an equity, a single stock futures account to be able to trade uh, a single stock futures. But you can't uh, use the, 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 the package to trade directly onto the market. What's the monthly fee for, for DMA? Uh, there's no additional cost, uh, Albert, it's all included already. That's one of the benefits of trading with PHR Online. Okay. Okay, pleasure Alistair. Are there any other questions coming through? Thanks a lot for the questions, guys. Keep them up. Um, uh, looks like those are the questions for now. But guys, um, you know, single stock futures and CFDs are great tools, especially if you're a trader, uh, the capital efficient, uh, you don't need a lot of capital to trade with. Um, they're exciting in the sense that the, the funds are in your account tonight, on the, on, all the time as you see the market moving, those funds are moving in and out your account, in and out your, your holdings as such. Um, but I like them in the sense that, the, 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 that you can see the movement um, and obviously it, 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 it's very profitable uh, provided you're doing your homework. So let's talk about homework. So I suggest that when you get this presentation, please review the presentation as well as the recording, listen to the recording. I hope the recording comes out fine, but um, any questions you have, please send them through to me. Uh, ideal situation would be to, to post all your questions up on our Facebook page so everybody can read about it and learn, it and learn from it. But um, there's additional information on the PSGN on website uh, under the trading section regarding single stock futures and CFDs. And there's also a lot of examples, especially on the CFD side regarding the, 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 the interest side, how is interest calculated and things like that on a daily basis. So, um, uh, Elbray, if you want to look at those examples, maybe answer your question more. Remember, that this is, they, they are geared products, so it makes it more affordable for a lot of people. I suggest if you're start, if first starting out, maybe start with a small little contract you saw just now redefined. 85 Rand is all you need to open up one contract, okay? So, it's a nice little stepping stone, nice way to get yourself uh, um, uh, orientated into the market. 
So I purpose single stock futures account and a CFD account. It doesn't cost you anything additional. There's no uh, 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 monthly fee like we have with, with an equity account. That's what they, what they call a BDA account. There's no 40 rand uh, a cost involved yet. It doesn't cost you anything. So yes, you just have to use the figure once if you have an account with us. But uh, we will lay up to a million rand exposure. That's between the two accounts. So you can split that. 500,000, 500,000 uh, exposure. If you want more than that, obviously uh, the, the compliance department might need some additional information from you. But to learn more about it is go learn about the product first of all. And this is what this presentation is all about. And then go do some paper trading. Remember the main thing is for you to gain confidence. Start small. Uh, we don't have a single stock uh, 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 simulator on the equity side. We do have a, a simulator on the Aussie and Omi. You can play around with that. Um, and all, uh, and uh, we don't actually have one on, on CVDs at this point in time. But you, know, you can use the normal equity simulator and understand how the platform works. Alternatively, just open up the Excel spreadsheet and say to yourself, okay, if this was today, what would I have done? Okay. But start small. As I say, use redefine as example. It's going to cost you 85 Rand in, in margin to open up a contract. Most important thing about trading derivatives is risk and money management. So money management is one of the M's we talk about. The other one is obviously mindset, what we call them controlling your emotions. And that's where the discipline comes in. So it's important that you plan your trade and trade your plan. And as a cliche, I firmly believe in it. So guys, from my side, good luck, happy trading. Give me just quickly if any other questions that come through quickly. Um, I think I've been answered everything. Okay, yeah, looks like I've answered everything. So to confirm interest rates on single stock futures. Uh, yeah, the, the, there's a slight difference of interest rates uh, between single stock futures and CFDs. On single stock futures, obviously the market makers are making the market and obviously they're, they're very competitive. On CFDs, that's, that's stipulated by PSG, which is roughly about 6.5%. So it's slightly a bit higher. Um, as I said, there's pros and cons of both of them. But uh, yeah, interest rates, but it's still very, very affordable. Okay, so Steve, I hope that answers your question. Um, there's no rollover costs with, with CFDs, Stephen. So aren't they the same or very similar? That, as I say, I believe the cost, of, the trading costs are much cheaper for, for CFDs, where, where single stock futures are slightly bit more, but then, as I say, the interest, uh, interest r uh, rate is much lower. Okay. Uh, here's a question from Timber. When do I plan to do, a, uh, do, a, do another currency futures one? Uh, maybe in November sometime. We we'll probably have one evening seminar coming up again, webinar. Uh, those of you that are on this webinar, I am testing out a, the format for evening one. Um, so I am repeating uh, this presentation next week. Uh, I think it's on the 10th. So I want to see how many people actually attend. Um, I've tried to do this in the past. I haven't, uh, haven't had much uh, success here. That's why we have the lunch hour ones. But we'll see how it goes. Um, Okay, uh, recommend CSD. Sorry, Alice, I'm not 100% question, uh, uh, understanding your question again. Do you recommend which single stock futures to open? Uh, depends on what you can afford. But uh, I suggest start with single stock futures. And maybe just start trading, tracking our, our recommendations, as I say, um, to get uh, redefined. They're very cheap right now for short. Um, Hope to answer your question. Minimum uh, capital uh, decent enough to trade single stock futures. Decent enough, as I said, at least under thousand, but minimum I would say is ten thousand. Well, Remy, I'm not hundred percent sure of your question there. Uh, Minimum amount needed to have for portfolio. As I say, with single stock futures, I say at least ten thousand. But ideally, 50. the more you have, the more positions you can open. So you can have more flexibility. How you call it that? 
But guys, um, I hope this, uh, you found it informative. Thanks, Thomas. Uh, I, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the, the format. Uh, but guys, from my side, here's my, um, here's my email address. Any questions you guys have, there's my direct phone number. Be it uh, derivatives or single stock futures, uh, the product itself, please email me. And uh, from my side, thanks a lot for your support. I hope you found it was beneficial and worth your time. And um, we talk again. Thanks a lot for your support. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye-bye for now.